I've ridden a monkey before when I got a chance to ride a bunch of Honda Mini Motos during a trip to the launch of the Honda Navi. One of the models was the previous generation monkey which I took for a quick test ride around the neighborhood. But that's not really enough, is it? Because when you have a monkey, you really want to spank it. And so recently I finally got my chance. And it was glorious. Stay tuned for the sorted details, and if you're enjoying the content, please consider helping this channel out by subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with friends. Honda sells a lot of motorcycles around the world, more than twice as many as the next biggest manufacturer. And when you sell north of 10 million motorized two-wheelers per year, you better believe that most of them are going to be small, functional and practical motorcycles and scooters designed to get people around town, shopping and to and from work. And most of them are sold in non-Western markets. But Honda is also the big motorcycle manufacturer that has been bringing small motorcycles to Western markets in greater numbers than any other brand. In some Western countries where young riders are compelled by law to start their riding career on sub 125cc motorcycles, this makes sense. However, in Canada and the United States where a 16 year old can get their motorcycle license and head on over to a dealership that same day to purchase a Hayabusa, 125cc bikes aren't quite as popular. We live in huge countries and traverse enormous distances, mostly on highways, and for that purpose, even 250cc bikes seem too small. So Honda was faced with a problem. How do you sell 125cc or smaller bikes to a population that isn't compelled by law to buy them and would probably be better off getting something at least twice the displacement? Why, you make them adorable, cool, and stylish. And so they did. And the most adorable one of the bunch is the Monkey, a bike with stunning fit and finish and a history behind it to boot. But what would you use it for? Let's face it, this is primarily a city commuter as long as you're not commuting on the highway. It is also a perfect first real motorcycle for someone wanting to learn how to use the clutch and all the other controls. And it's the Harley of Minimotos, being the most bling bling of the lot. But what a lot of people don't know is that that high fender and off-road styling isn't just for show. This thing is quite capable off pavement, even in sand and on single track. I was seriously surprised how far off the beaten path you can take the Monkey. First, the particulars. The Monkey has a 124cc air-cooled single-cylinder motor that produces 9.3 horsepower and 8.1 pound-feet of torque, and is mated to a new 5-speed transmission. Not pavement shredding for sure, but it's also not a toy. Top speed on the flat is around 90 km per hour or 55 miles per hour, faster downhill, slower uphill or into a stiff wind. The new transmission is appreciated over the outgoing 4 speed unit, but 5th gear almost feels like an overdrive. Hit an uphill and you're shifting down quickly if you don't want to lose momentum. In terms of handling, this bike is nimble. With those tiny wheels and a 45 inch wheelbase, it turns on a dime and changes direction instantly. Only weighing 229 pounds and with a pretty low saddle of 30.6 inches, the Monkey is super easy to handle and Brooke loved riding it around our local roads. In terms of handling on pavement, the Grom is still keen, but the Monkey isn't far behind. The suspension gives you about 4 inches of travel front and back and keeps the bike stable in all situations. Brakes were a bit of a surprise for me. When I heard that the new Monkey would come with ABS, I was somewhat disappointed as sliding the rear wheel is a hoot. Yet when I did it on this bike, the rear wheel locked up like always. The front clearly has ABS, but the rear doesn't appear to. The Canadian Honda website says the bike has ABS front and back, but to me it appears only to have it on the front. That's a win for me. Finally, the tiny tank holds 5.6 liters of fuel which got me 200 kilometers or 125 miles down the road on premium. Not bad considering I was going around backcountry roads and was basically flat out most of the time. The Monkey is the most comfortable of the mini motos I've tried and I've ridden all the Hondas except for the Dax and the Trail 125, though stay tuned for the trail coming soon to this channel. The seat is enormous, flat and perfectly padded. I spent hours on it and never felt uncomfortable, something I can't say for a lot of much larger touring bikes. Being taller, I can increase my legroom by simply scooting further back. Brooke sat much closer to the front and also found the bike very comfy. 
So on the road, the Monkey is a lively and nimble city bike, perfect for commuting, shopping, and zipping through traffic. It can handle rough city roads and can jump curbs with the best of them. But there's also that high fender and those chunky tires. Could the Monkey be a mini dirt bike dressed up like a city poser? Is this the world's smallest scrambler? Well, if you've watched my channel before, you know that I would aim to find out. So off we went, the Monkey and I, to the local dirt trails. And I have to say, I was seriously impressed. The bike rolled over gravel, dirt, rocks and sand no problem and managed to plow its way through most of the stuff I pointed it at. In very deep sand, the mostly road-oriented tires met their match and I had to get up and walk slash push the bike to firmer ground, the light weight of the little Honda making this fairly easy. But we got everywhere we wanted to go, so I can't complain. Now to be clear, I wasn't trying to break any speed records on this thing, the monkey is not a dual sport. Standing is difficult because the bars are too low, so rough terrain is best handled sitting down which can get bumpy with limited suspension travel. But despite the drawbacks, I'm a glutton for punishment, so off to the single track we went, the easier section, not the crazy hard one. And you know what? The monkey made it through. Yes, it was slow, mostly in first gear, as I had to carefully pick my lines to avoid the bigger rocks or roots. This bike doesn't come with a bash plate, and a few of the hairier parts had me worried for the undercarriage. Oh boy, this is... Uh... This is concerning here, I'll just stand up. So my weight isn't on the bike. And I'm up. But I got to the other end with me and the bike in one piece and far less sweaty than I finished the same course riding my Tenere 700 or a KLR 650 or Africa Twin. I didn't have to work that hard to get this tiny bike through. So the answer is yes, the Monkey is a tiny scrambler. Now we get to the price, which is perhaps this bike's biggest weakness. The Monkey is the most expensive Honda Minimoto on sale in Canada and the US. In the States, the bike goes for $4,250 and in Canada, $6,068. But that includes freight, PDI and applicable fees as Honda Canada has recently started including those in the MSRP. Bravo! I wish all manufacturers in all countries were as transparent with their pricing. In the States, a Grom costs $650 less, while in Canada the difference is a whopping $1450. And the Grom does handle a bit better on pavement, has a slightly larger tank and can carry a passenger in a pinch, which the Monkey, due to the lack of passenger pegs, unfortunately can't. So why would you pay more for a Monkey? Looks. It certainly does look awesome and is a bit ahead of the Grom in that department, so if style is your thing, the Monkey is your mini moto. People will pick the Monkey for the same reason they buy Apple and Tesla products. It's cool, funky and has a premium vibe. But for me, the best reason to get a Monkey is because of its surprising off-road ability. After all, what's the point of even having a Monkey if you're not going to spank it once in a while? Is the Monkey superior off-road to the Trail 125? I'm going to find out later this summer, as the trail has been slightly delayed but is on its way, so stay tuned for that review and maybe a comparison video down the road. In the meantime, I have to say, the Monkey is pricey and perhaps not the most practical of the mini motos, but man, it looks cool. Everywhere I went, it made people smile. It's adorable, literally smaller than the folding e-bike I just tested. Brooke loved it and was sorry to have to return it. What a great city runabout. And it's good to know that when the pavement ends, the fun doesn't have to. So, if you have a significant other whom you want to teach to ride a real motorcycle, the Monkey is a great choice and its funky style might convince some non-motorcyclists to give the sport a shot just because of its cute factor. And that's true for all the mini motos in Honda's lineup. So these super tiny, super efficient bikes definitely have a place in the Western market. Which is your favorite mini moto and why? Please leave your thoughts in the comments below, and since we're talking about small bikes, stay tuned next week for the smallest bagger on the market, the Honda Rebel 1100T. Thanks for watching and ride safe out there.